Texture Electronics. This video is going to be about generating Gerber files for manufacturing because once you're actually done creating a board in PCB new and you have a layout, you need to actually have a standard file set in order to send it out for creation. So let's open up KiCad here. I have the Getting into Blinky project open uh, as an example. And there is a video uh, as part of part seven of Getting into Blinky covers a little bit of this as well, but we're going to go into a little bit more in depth. So let's open up the, uh, the layout here. So this is a one inch by one inch board. Now we can see that we have a wide variety of signals, or layers here rather, and so we need to make sure that when we actually generate these files that we uh, capture all the necessary information, including uh, drill files in copper layers and solder mask layers and everything else. So let's take a look at that. Um, so the way we do this, um, you know, some CAD programs have a separate uh, Gerber function. In this one, it's actually plot, which is kind of confusing when you think about it. It's like, oh, why? But when you look at how the format is, Gerbers are actually just an XY plot um, using a standard size pen, effectively. That's what it is. Now you can see we have a lot of other options here. We have PostScript, SVG, DXF, HPG, Gel. Uh, but really... Um, Gerber is going to be the most common, and that's going to be the ones that most fabs ask for. Some of them, like Oshpark, who I use often, and uh, for PCB, well, I guess no, for PCB, ask for Gerbers. But, you know, there's some that'll take the actual generated files, like a KiCad file or an Eagle file, and it'll basically generate the Gerbers for you, uh, especially in the way that they want them. But in this case, we're, um, you know, there are a lot more that want the actual Gerbers and then can process them. So if we look here on the side, you can see that these all show up as the same as what's over here. Now, not all of them are checked because we don't necessarily want to export all of them. Uh, as it so happens, these are the ones that the ones that are showing as, as checked here are the ones we want. That's top copper, bottom copper. This is top side silk screen, bottom side silk screen, top side uh, mask, and bottom side solder mask. And then finally, edge cuts. That's actually going to tell them where to cut out the boards. Now, if you look at the rest of our options here, we can see that we actually have an option to plot or not plot some of the uh, reference designators, right? So module reference on the silk screen, uh, other module text, and uh, values. Now, I almost never plot values, but actually when we created this, um, well, I'm going to close, we'll come back to that. Uh, we can see that there, it's kind of hard to see. I guess you can see this is one microfarad cap. This is actually not selected. Um, if we go to, uh, I think that's on top side, so we want to go top side, and then we go to value, we can see this is set to invisible. So even if we did say that we did want to plot it, that one specifically would not show up. However, if you had, you know, a couple of the values, you know, if, if that one was showing, but then this one was invisible, this one was visible, basically this plot setting would, would just ignore all of them anyways. And so usually I do that just in case I missed one. I usually don't like having values on the silk screen because those can change. Uh, module reference, I definitely do want on the silk screen. That's the reference designator C1, R1, D1, those kind of things. And those things are great for when you're, you know, if you're hand assembling your boards, you definitely want that there. And then other module text, that'll be things like, uh, uh, I guess we didn't really have any here. Normally, you know, you can see we have getting to blinking. This is actually in, this is in copper. So this is, well, this is in uh, the solder mask relief over top of the copper. So this should show up as a, uh, what it'll look like a, copper copper text effectively um, so that uh, there there is no other silk screen here but if we did have it then that would be available um, uh, invisible text we don't want any of that either because we we specifically told it not to show some of the specific texts tenting vias that's a way of how the vias refers to the uh, you know covering up the the vias with solder mask and everything like that so uh, that is another option that's common. And then uh, <coughs> finally, excluding from the other layers, we definitely don't want the, we don't, there's really no need to have the PCB outline to go into other layers. So we, we can get rid of that here. And then Gerber options, um, usually the standard ones are the ones I use. Proper file names, subtracting solder mask from the silk screen. I don't like that one because it would basically mean that your, your, uh, your silk screen would have, uh, it would it would basically 
take it take it out so like if you had a silk screen it would instead of trying to print over top of the copper with the silk screen it would just delete that in the file so it wouldn't show up um, <clears throat> and then using uh, auxiliary access as origin we just want to use our standard origin so um, and then none of these are are uh, available here so anyways let's hit plot and see what happens all right we see a couple of our files are created here and that's created in this folder and then when we click on generate drill file now we have the option to generate the uh, the drill file for uh, basically for the vias in this case we don't we we don't have any uh, non-plated through holes right these are all plated because they're vias so um, it's a plated through hole drill file effectively and um, on these settings here, these are uh, pretty standard settings as, as they are defaulted here, but uh, we did the rest of the board in inches, so we'll keep that. Suppressing leading zeros, that basically is is how much, uh, that's uh, in the numbering format and the, the raw file. Precision's good. Um, we do want to have uh, the postscript should be fine here. Uh, now this is the really tricky one. We definitely want to make sure that the mirror of y-axis in this case is not checked because otherwise it'll flip these up over the y-axis and that's really, really quite messy. I'm not sure what that that gets used for. Minimal header. Um, so all this stuff, this is good here. And then basically create drill file. And we'd see gtp.drill as well. If we go and then look, we, we already have a different video in the KiCad course about viewing Gerber files, but we can, since we just generated these, we can go and look at them as well. Let's open up Gerber view. We have that Gerber folder there. Let's see. We open up all these, and then open up the drill file. We can see we have all the different layers here, and uh, this should be good, good to send out to Fab. And there's a whole other, there's a whole bunch of options in here, like like the walkthrough showed. So that's a real fast way of seeing how we can generate Gerber files, and uh, we'll talk about some of the other factors in manufacturing and what other files you might want to be sending out. But for now, Gerber files are usually a really good start starting point and good enough to get get some prototype boards made and sent to you so you can start assembling and troubleshooting boards. Thanks for watching.